So all together, you can see how all these uh, various phenomena interact. Now, the vertical lines are, are major earthquakes. To the best of my ability uh, to get out of the log, because I, a lot of the time I wasn't there, there was a station operator that was taking this data. Uh, he was not a very reliable individual, but he did manage to hold together and get all this down. Some of the stuff was a little hard to read, but I pretty much have all the major earthquakes and their names to see how they uh -huh. fit into this whole electrical scheme. Now, what's interesting is during interval of low, low solar flux, where it's climbing, you can also see that the vibration of the Earth seemed to be maintaining at quite a regular level. But as the solar flux starts to go up, it's very clear that the vibration of the Earth starts to go up. Until, unfortunately, there was no data right here at an important point, but you can infer the curve. And right when this whole wave of solar activity passes, the vibration of the Earth seems to want to reach some kind of peak where here the vibration went off the scale in Landers and this waveform peak is in perfect symmetrical correlation with the 7.8 earthquake in Sumatra. Mm -hmm. So why that particular earthquake caused such widespread ground vibration uh, is a good question itself. You can see at the onset of the solar activity, kind of like the one we're experiencing now, uh, there was quite a cluster of earthquakes, and there was basically a significant earthquake at each solar flux peak. So there's some level of interaction going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that the, uh, the atmospheric level of interference is raised very high during the solar flux activity, which would be expected. There's going to be a lot more lightning and, and ionospheric disturbances and things making noise. Uh, some of that refracts into the earth. That's the reason for using the pair, because you can see that some of it was getting into the underground system. So these are like a rejection. So that you know that this particular peak here is not necessarily in the earth, but is coming from the outside. You can again see like there's mechanical correlation. There's all kinds of little intricacies in the waveforms here that show how they all connect together. Right. Uh, the precursor... <clears throat> But the one I got from Japan is shown here. Now, this uh, North Mexico earthquake uh, was out of range tellurically, but not out of range ionospherically. And you can see that this uh, progressive climb started in the overground electrical activity that the antenna picked up from the ionospheric reflection of the signals being generated out of the Earth in Mexico and went off the scale. Uh, probably would be up here somewhere, went off the scale uh, right during the earthquake interval, just as the Japan one did. Japan hmm. earthquake did the exact same thing, because the signals were so strong mm -hmm. from the Japan earthquake that the ionosphere carried them all the way to landers. Hmm. So this shows an example of the electrical connection. Unfortunately, there was no major California earthquakes at the time, uh, you know, that was one of the principal aims of this facility was to record everything that led up to a major California earthquake. So then the advanced seismic warning system would be solidly established at that point mm -hmm. rather than things that I remember or, you know, so, uh, somebody operating the station remembers or, you know, lost notes or whatever. At that point, it would be quantified, mm -hmm. but the station didn't live that long. So with the, you know, the system that you want to put together now, um, this is the middle of January 2014, and let's just say that you know there's enough uh, funds to cover the bond, you know, by the middle of February, and there's enough funds for about fifteen thousand dollars worth of equipment since you already have the poles and the wire and everything. Um, how long would it take uh, to have like a demonstration or to to finish that system if the twenty five thousand is raised? Well, to... under <clears throat> under uh, favorable circumstances, uh, one year. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in this part of the world, out in the dead dead desert in Nevada, there is a lot of times of the year that you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty much limited to most of the outdoor work has to occur from April to June, and then uh, again from like uh, October to beginning of December. Mm 
So it's not too cold or not too hot. Not too hot it's kind or of wind storms. The extremes. Or, you know, lightning there. storms, all the different things you have to deal with out there. Mm -hmm. So that kind of slows stuff down. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just going to be me and one other person that are going to be doing all this work. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at a one year, nominally a one year, but there could be delays. Mm -hmm. Now in this particular part of Nevada, there really isn't any expectations of any giant earthquake or, right. or anything here. But what's being done is because this is being supported by the government here. Mm -hmm. And the telephone company interests and what have you are supplying all the material and, uh, and a lot of uh, governmental support. It has to be built here as a demonstrator model. Uh -huh. And once it's demonstrated and the whole system is shown, and of course the seismograph is, you know, wherever the seismograph is, it's, uh, this seismograph is a global system. So.